Howdy everyone. All right, so the canopy has been drilled with the initial eighth inch plexiglass drill bit. Don't know if that will show, but there's a hole there, like in the middle of my palm. There's one there, one there. Like I said, that's just an eighth inch plexiglass drill bit. And you can see now on the canopy frame, hopefully, you can see where it left a little mark at each hole location. That one might be a little bit easier to see. So next, I'm going to deburr these holes. And my plan is to put an aluminum strip between... I'm what, the aluminum strip will be attached to the canopy and then it will span across the seam between the fixed rear window and the canopy, but it will be attached to the canopy. So normally, if you're not going to do that, you would countersink these holes for a number six screw head, but I'm going to countersink these holes for a dimple that's going to be in the aluminum strip that I'm going to have through here. So I've already dimpled a piece of aluminum the thickness that I'm going to use, just a scrap piece, the same thickness that I'm going to use for this strip. Drilled it and dimpled it, and then I test fitted uh, the dimple onto a scrap piece of plexiglass, one of the cutoffs. I kept dimpling that and adjusting my micro stop until the dimple in that test piece nested really nice into the dimple on the plexiglass. And what's cool about that, since the plexiglass is transparent, you can flip it upside down and you can um, you can look at how well the dimple is nesting when you look at it from the back side because you can see through it and you can see how the aluminum is fitting. So that was kind of cool. So now that I've got my micro stop set up to the proper depth for my aluminum strip dimple, I'm going to go ahead and countersink all of these. Of course, I have to uh, deburr the back side. I'm going to do that now because the pilot on my countersink is an eighth inch. So I'm going to do the countersinking while these holes are still eighth inch. After I'm done countersinking, then I'll open these holes up to the final diameter for the number six screw to cleanly pass through. Um, and for that, I'm going to use my unibit. And I'll probably have to get, I may have to come at it from both sides because I don't think it's deep the steps on the unibit, I don't think they're deep enough to go completely through the plexiglass. But after I get the plexiglass done with the countersinking and final sizing the hole, then I'm going to come over here and I will center punch all these little marks. And then I'll do my usual drilling and then I'll tap them for the screws. And then at that point, I will put the canopy, I'll put the canopy back onto the airplane and I'll temporarily run the screws through, see how everything looks. At that point, at least this back half will be locked in place. I'll tape the front again just to keep it from wandering and then I'll start laying out the holes along the side. All right, that's the plan and I will talk to you soon. Howdy, everyone. All right, well, let's see. I now have <clears throat> the actual canopy final drilled and countersunk. And remember, I'm going to put a strip of thin aluminum across the seam here between the, the uh, canopy and the back window. So these dimples are dimpled deep enough for the appropriate dimple. So it's a non-event, but um, a couple of things I want to point out. I think I've mentioned it before about heat. You don't want to get the canopy too hot. Um, I think people get a little carried away sometimes with, with having the canopy so warm that it's actually too much. Vans does mention briefly in the instructions about localized heating, which means when you do anything with drilling or uh, countersinking, even sanding, 
you generate a lot of heat in a localized area. I was very surprised how much heat is generated just by hand sanding these edges. It gets hot fast, so be very careful of that. Also, to keep the, uh, even though I was using a plexiglass bit, it wanted to punch through at the very end. So I went uh, quite slow on my speeds and feeds. And the countersinking speed is like super slow. I mean, the, the countersinking bit basically just turns like this. Really, really slow. Same thing with drilling, just a really slow speed on the drill. So I, I use the... Uh, uh, plexiglass bit, like I said, an eighth inch to drill the initial hole. And then at that point I countersunk because the countersink pilot is eighth inch. After I had the countersink done, then I went back and I opened up the hole to, what is it, 530 seconds? I forget what the measurement is. It's slightly bigger than what you would usually use so the canopy has room to move. Personally, I'd like it to be a little bit bigger than what Vans recommends, but I'm going to go with what they recommend. So I used a unibit, but like I said, the steps between the unibit weren't deep enough to get all the way through the plexiglass. So I went as far as I could from one direction, and then I had to come from the other direction and uh, clean out the hole that way. No big deal. And then, of course, the back side then was deburred. So these are done, and I just finished up drilling and tapping the holes in the actual frame. Now again, I'm following Van's directions on this, but I am not a fan. This aluminum is so thin. You're, you're tapping a 632. You're only getting a couple of threads of engagement with this thin aluminum. I'm going to go with it because like I said, I'm going to have uh, fuel tank sealant all through here. And then the canopy is going to obviously smush into the fuel tank sealant. And then the mechanical screws will help hold it. Um, so I, I don't need to put a lot of tension, a lot of force on the actual screws themselves, which I wasn't planning on doing anyway, because again, I want the canopy to be able to shrink and stretch. So it may not be that big of an issue since I'm not killing the screws to begin with, and I've got all this fuel tank sealant, which will act as a fastening mechanism. But if these give me trouble at all, I'm going to drill these out slightly bigger, or at least clean up the threads. Or maybe not. If they strip on their own, I'll just go ahead and put washers and nuts on the back side. So these are now drilled and tapped. A couple of other catch-up tidbits. You can see that I've got my lift struts now in place. And they do, without question, they push the entire canopy frame forward. Before I put the struts on, I was opening up my gap along here so I can get the canopy physically open. I wanted to make sure that the canopy could open and close freely before I put the struts on because the struts will push it open. And if you don't have clearance in here, you're going to jack your skins. So I wanted to make sure I had clearance before I put the struts on. For me personally, the way that this all worked out, I've got like an eighth inch gap here. I kept sneaking up on it and sneaking up on it, and I had to have it this wide just to get it to open and to clear this front skin. So that's what it needed. That's what I gave it. That's what I have. Um, once I was able to get the canopy open and closed freely, I installed the struts. Of course, they work fine. But I did notice that my gap, especially on the sides here, closed up to almost nothing. Now... These side gaps were not an eighth inch because these sides, as soon as you move the canopy, they move backwards. But the front or the top tends to want to kind of carve itself into the skin first before it clears. So there was a little bit of a gap here, but once I put the struts on, it pretty much closed that down to nothing on both sides. But if you remember... I put nut plates on the frame and I put those, what I call, they're just normal flathead screws, but I use them as jacking screws. So as the canopy comes down, those screws butt up against the framework in the forward area here. So I just adjusted those ever so slightly to give me a little bit of a gap here again, even with the struts installed. 
The other thing to keep in mind is you want to have your struts located in the same place as best you can, both up on the frame and back on the fuselage. If you've got one strut in this location and your other strut is slightly back or slightly forward, when you open and close the canopy, you're going to get some asymmetry between the two. Is it a big deal? I don't know. I would imagine in extreme cases it would be, but... My struts are very, very close. When I open the canopy, that one seems to reach full extension just before this one. So I think they're off. I did some measuring. I think they might be off like an eighth of an inch, but I'm fine with that. It's, it's not a big deal. Just something to keep, keep aware of when you're doing the installation. The other thing that you may or may not have noticed, and I may or may not have mentioned it, is that I took the clamps off of clamping the frame in this back corner on both sides. And again, now that the frame is all one unit, because you remember we drilled and now we have that splice plate complete, completely clecoed. So this is all one unit now and it is hinged the way it's going to be hinged and it's got the struts the way that it needs to be um, real time in flight. So the frame is now sitting where it wants to sit. If I were to come back here and try to clamp this here and pull this into the roll bar, all I'm doing is imparting stress on the rest of the frame. If you pull this, if you try to pull this tight against the roll bar, even with your spacer in between here, you're putting tension on this area here and in the forward frame. You pull this tight and then you mark your holes, you drill your holes, you drill and mark, you mark and drill the canopy holes. You put the canopy on, you screw it all down in place, and then you take these clamps off. Where's all that stress going to go? Into the canopy. So I took those off so that the canopy frame can sit where it wants to sit. The only place I clamped was at the top because, and I'll show you here in a minute, when I take these clamps off, this still flops around a lot up in this forward area, but I wanted to make sure that this top area was back where it needs to be in alignment with the roll bar with the spacers in place so I can get these holes drilled. It's very minimal, but there's a lot of flop here. That's the only reason why these are clamped. So now I'm going to take the clamps off and I can finally, now that I've got my holes finished, I can finally come into this piece and flute it, which will hopefully take away some of that misalignment. So you'll see if I take these off. There's one. Let me go around to the other side. Now watch watch this frame relocate itself. There. So you can see it's very minimal, but of course you don't want to drill and tap this into your canopy because it's it's curved right you can see it needs to be pulled back into place but now i'm going to flute this now that i've got these holes drilled i can see clearly where to flute so i'm going to flute these now and that should hopefully alleviate a little bit of this but it's not horrible um the canopy is going to have to absorb some of this stress if i can't get it out any other way but that's what i'm going to work on now is trying to relieve this and since the canopy is drilled, and this is now drilled and tap, I'm going to bring the canopy back in place when I'm done fluting. Bring the canopy back over, put some screws in it to hold it in place back here. I'll probably re-tape the front. Again, I'm not taping to pull it down to cinch it and put stress on it. I'm just laying it on, and I'm taping it just to keep it from moving. So with it taped up front, with it screwed in the back, I can start laying out my screw holes along the sides. So I'm going to clean up some shavings. I'm going to flute this, try to get this to lay a little nicer. And then I'll put the canopy back on and go from there. All right, so making progress. It's just steady as she goes. All right, talk to you guys later.